First off, there's a little content warning for eugenics. If you don't want to hear about that, and I don't blame you, uh, maybe sit this one out and uh, take care of yourself. Hello everyone, and God bless. It appears that I've gotten a strike on my YouTube channel for something perverse. But I would never. You all know me very well, and you know I would never do something like that. This is a very wholesome channel where we read the good word, but we ignore all the parts about Jesus hanging out with sex workers and hating what we would describe today as capitalism. Okay, so I'm not doing this bit for the whole video, and I couldn't even dress up for it because I just worked out and I am stinky. But we are going to be talking about purity. What is purity? Well, according to the Oxford Dictionary, purity is freedom from adulteration or contamination or perhaps more importantly, freedom from immortality, especially of a sexual nature. But for the sake of this video, when we talk about purity, we're not talking about the textbook definition. We're going to be talking about the purity movement. So like, what the fuck is that? Well, in my video, The History of You Know What, we touched briefly upon puritanical Christianity. I know many of my audience, at least in the West TM, won't be shocked when I say that this is the root source of purity culture as well as the beginning of the purity movement. But how did we get from book burning to here? Well, in 1878, the Victorian purity movement began in Birmingham, England. However, their ideas were nothing new even then. But by 1880, fuck. But by 1885, the group exploded into 106 different chapters around England. I mention this because about 10 or so years after, Groups like this started popping up in Australia, Canada, and the U.S. However, I'll be focusing mostly on the U.S. because it's, well, where I live, and where YouTube is headquartered, and where most of my audience probably is. To sum up their ideology, they liked temperance, or abstinence from alcohol. They wanted to ban prostitution, which wasn't legal in the U.S., but go off, I guess. And they, get this, thought that prostitution was caused by socialism, which sounds familiar. It's a Trojan horse. Inside the horse, there are socialists, and there's programs that will- Nah, must be thinking of something else. And they weren't too keen on homosexuality or the blacks, because they really liked that good old racial purity. They also really hated birth control, abortion, and wanted to censor porn, but after saying that they're like, pro-eugenics, I guess that's not- not really anything, is it? But talking about eugenics, which it's never great when you start a sentence off of that. In the US, the movements that followed the social purity movement was the social hygiene movement and the eugenics movement, which started in the early 1900s. The social hygiene movement focused more on the sexual aspects of the social purity movement, but make no mistake, there were still people calling for racial purity in there as well. But for many of those people, the American eugenics movement was the one surefire way to ensure racial purity. The eugenics movement was one that was codified with laws like forced sterilizations and prohibiting some individuals that had mental or physical defects and couples of mixed race from marrying. The movement really only ceased after the Second World War because Hitler took a lot of his cues from America, and that was, quote, not a good look. Now, I'm going to do that thing where primary school books leave a huge gap between World War II and now. However, I suppose that's because most of them were published in the 50s. Huh. But similarly published in the 50s, many of our parents, if you are a millennial or a Zoomer, and if you think about it, their parents were part of the greatest generation. Talk about conceited. When you consider the greatest generation and the, even the silent generation, they were born right in the midst of the 1900s, with the oldest of them being 40 when the eugenics movement ended. We like to think of things like the eugenics movement and Jim Crow happening ages ago, but they really didn't. And it's evident when we look at our current world. Purity culture and evangelicalism is, are still around today and are greatly prevalent, especially in American culture, but really in many English-speaking countries. And it's so evident when we look at Sissi, Sesta Fosta, a lot of the transphobic bills that we're seeing being passed, a lot of the homophobic bills that want to be passed, the stigma around sex work, the lack of comprehensive sex ed, Fox News. With each coming generation, we become more progressive as a society. We live in a society. 
However, those on the fringes of society can't afford to wait. So, what do we do? Shit, man, I don't know, I'm just a fucking YouTuber. Like many of my videos on these tough topics, we just really have to look within ourselves and, as well as have those tough conversations with others about deprogramming societally induced sex negativity, as well as other things that social parody brings about, like racism. Which isn't an easy task, I know. I trip up sometimes, and I'm a black sex worker. I'm supposed to be immune to things like racism and horophobia and all that stuff. That stuff should be coming out of my mouth, right? If only societally induced prejudice worked like that. But if you want to donate your time or your money, you can look towards Planned Parenthood, or SWAP, or the Sex Workers Outreach Project. Or hell, research an organization in your area that needs your help. And keep spreading good, well-researched information. I won't lie, the odds are kinda stacked against us, but we have the best chance of fighting back now. Well, that's it in the video. If you liked the video, like the video. Comment what bugs you about purity culture. And subscribe. As always, my links are in the description. Have a great rest of your day, or whenever you're watching this. Okay, bye.